everybody, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. We are leaving Dantooine today, and I've been thinking long and hard about where we're going to go first. And I feel like the order we're going to do these planets is we're going to do them from most common to least common with a slight exception. So we're going to do Tatooine, because everyone knows Tatooine. Then we're going to do Kashyyyk, the homeworld of the Wookiees, because most people know Kashyyyk. Then if we were to just go by, like, notoriety, Korriban would be next, but since that's the Sith world, I want to save that to the end. So then we're going to do Manon, and then Korriban. And that's how we're going to approach this mess. Um, yeah, so let's get to Tatooine. Let's talk with everyone before we go here. Like, yeah, comment, what subscribe. Do you want? Wondering if you had any more war stories. You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. Where did you fight this time? We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover, but that was a mistake. Why? What happened? The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. What happened next? It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. A ship? We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. I like Candorous a lot. Uh, let's make sure we talk to everybody here. Um, we'll get some... Uh, get some lore going in this episode before I headed out to Tatooine. Can I... Oh, emergency food and supplies. Huh. Cool. I never did check. I mean, like, surely Davik had something in here. Oh, well, maybe not. No, I guess. No problem. Didn't work. Impossible. Okay. All right. Well. Where is all of my other friends? <laughs> ah, T3. Beep, 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 boop. Can you construct program spike for me? Nice. Zalbar, I know you dislike speaking with me, but let's try this. Have we more to save ourselves, Zalbar? 
They don't trust me. Tell me more eventually. Okay. Nothing from Zalbar. Juhani. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before in the grove. It was wrong of me. Um. You thought the dark side had consumed you? It I is am nothing. sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes and in my own. Do not worry, Juhani. Oh, I forgive you. you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I try to take your life. I can only hope that in our time journeying together, I will succeed. And taking my life? What do you mean? What do you mean by this? How More to I say? Of assistance to you, Padawan? I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Uh... How did you come to be a Jedi? I didn't know that she had an issue with Candorus. I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Yes, please continue. Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my home world. We did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. Where did you live? The hind end of space. A pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth, defenders of justice, heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. Maybe I was one of those children. Did you meet a Jedi? Yes. Yes, I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. Enamored? They were quite striking, especially the tales of their leader. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child. But this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came. Although... Perhaps I was not entirely ready for it, or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. Uh, I may feel I... like there's more I could learn about you what here. Is it you you doing all right? <clears throat> I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. What is wrong? I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now and I can still see it. I still feel it. Perhaps you just need more time. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. I cannot afford to look after you all the time, Johanny. If I see you begin to slip back, I will intervene. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. Okay. How may I be of a So what is the what problem is you, like you have with Candorus? I am wary of the Mandalorian. I do not trust him. He has proven himself well. I have never trusted Mandalorians. They drove my parents from Cathar, aided the Sith, and attacked the Republic. Their warped notions of honor may provoke them to do even more heinous acts. I do not know why you tolerate his presence on your ship. In truth, he has had some merit so far, but I am not certain it is worth the risk you take. 
You should not judge Candorus by other Mandalorians. He's proved to be a danger to the galaxy again. But this man himself has proven acceptable so far. Merely keep your distance from him, and watch him, so that he does not betray us. Have you spoken to him? Spoken to him? No, no, I could not. Mandalorians are vicious of temper, and easily provoked. I, I would not want to tempt his wrath. A wise decision. We do not need internal conflict. I am sorry. It is just that I cannot stand to be around him for very long. I suppose I do not really dislike him. It is just... Just... The Mandalorians came and overran my world. They slaughtered my race. I cannot forget what they have done, or forgive. A hatred and fear lead to the dark side, Jahan. You are right. Of course. You always seem to know what you speak of. This simmering anger and hatred for the Mandalores seems to have found a place in my heart, though. Sometimes I worry. About what? That I may fall to the dark side once again. That I may threaten you, the Republic, the entire galaxy. If that time does come, and if I do threaten our task, it is only right that you should strike me down. If I fall and endanger you and the galaxy, you must do what is right. If my death will defeat Malak, then that is what must be done. But we are becoming too morbid. Too soon. We should not talk like this now. There is much yet we can do. But we shall talk later. I am sure. Interesting. So I assume Big Z is not going to give me anything until... We are on Kashyyyk, probably. Where hopefully I can earn his trust. Bastilla and Karth, so let me find mission. Yeah, this this episode isn't gonna be super action packed, that's for sure. It's... There's mission. Hey there, what can I do for you? I want you. To, I want to talk to you about your brother. Sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes, have to I had this conversation with her? Get a little worked up. What did she do to you? My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay. Until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles. Guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. Lena dump I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. So what happened? After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were going to try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me, and we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Maybe something happened to oh, him. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff but good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, nothing. Okay, have it your way. Alright, now let's go talk to the two in the cockpit, and then fly to Tatooine, and then that might be just that video. Just like that. Let's start with my man, Karth. Yes, what's on your mind? You've been very quiet lately, you know that? Have I been quiet? Suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. Left out of the loop, I don't left understand. Left out of the loop, you know, not being told anything, strung along. It's really starting to irritate me. For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. I'm rather curious to know what went on, and why they didn't keep you on down to Wing for training. Isn't that strange?
They thought it was more important that I helped the star maps. And why is that? Stay. You were a great help on Terrace, but why would they keep you with us? Don't they? Don't they have to train you? They said there's a bond between Bastila and bond? myself. What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? <laughs> I have trouble believing that. You're a neophyte Padawan who's been saddled with the responsibility of tracking down these star maps. Why? That's not normal. I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. Are you saying I'm not no, needed? No, I didn't mean that you weren't wanted or that I want to go. It's just... Damn it. Well, I'll tell you this much. I'm not going to wait around until I'm betrayed again. I'm not going to betray you. Yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? Look, I didn't mean it that way. I want to get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's let's just get on with what we were doing. Aw, Karth. You're my, you're my main man. I, How can I, I help? I don't, don't want to make you mad at me. I do? How did you know? Educated guess from the way you keep staring. I'm a Jedi. I am far too disciplined to betray my emotions with outward physical displays. We both know the real reason you have some idea of what I'm thinking, the bond we share. What do you mean? Our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. We can feel some of what the other feels, and what I feel within you troubles me. A Padawan must receive considerable training. They must learn to control their emotions and darker impulses. Often it takes years before using the Force can be considered safe. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. What do you think I should do? I don't do? think there's much you can do. If things were different, I would recommend several years of training under one of the Jedi Masters. But I fear that won't be possible. Thankfully, you've exhibited a degree of compassion and self-control up to this point. I sincerely hope you can maintain these traits in the future. We must all resist the influence of the dark side. It's everything we are fighting against. This is doubly important for you, with your natural affinity for the Force. I will try. That's good to hear. Without the proper training, however, I'm afraid you will find the path difficult even with the best of intentions. There is great danger ahead for both of us. Our destinies are intertwined. Everything one of us does will have consequences for the other. Any reckless behavior on your part is likely to affect me as well. Works both ways, doesn't it? You could help me stay yes, strong. That's true. I will do my best to guide you, but I am no master. Not yet. And there are times when I find the sheer strength of your power almost overwhelming. Your power could be a gift or a curse. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. I would appreciate any help you could hope offer. I have the wisdom to help you through the dark times. But for now, we should return to our mission. Okay, with all of that being covered, let's go to Tatooine. that Tatooine? Why can we go to Yavin? Yavin was not on my map. Maybe that's something Davik had. Worry about that later. Let's get to Tatooine. Get a mallet cutscene. Yep. <laughs> that's Saul, right? Oh, that's Saul. 
There's Lord Malak. Lord Malak, the Star Forge is operating at 200% capacity, far beyond our expectations. I am more interested in the young Jedi Bastila and her battle meditation. Have you learned how she escaped the destruction of Taris? She was aided by Karth Onasi, a decorated war hero of the Republic and a legendary soldier. During the Mandalore Wars, he was honored many times for his bravery. You know this man? Yes, Lord Malak. He served under me when I still followed the Republic. You could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malak. He survived? Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, was there when Bastila and Karth escaped the planet. Apparently, they left him for dead. Got a crushed. A war hero. It's a wonder you survived the encounter. I am hard to kill, Lord Malak. Kalo has agreed to help us capture the young Bastila for a very hefty fee, of course. But I assure you, he is well worth the price. His reputation as a bounty hunter is very short. <laughs> Her companions are nothing to me, Kalo. But I desire the young Jedi taken alive, if at all possible. Lord Malak, forgive me, there is something else. May we have a private audience away from the ears of the common soldiers? I trust you are not wasting my time, Admiral Carath. I promise you will be very interested in what Kalo has to tell you about Bastila's other companions, Lord Malak. I am shocked Kalo Nord survived. Absolutely bewildered. Is that the Star Forge? Or is that just the map? Welcome to Tatooine. Gotta be the most visited planet in Star Wars at this point. The Force has given us a, a vision. Like the one we shared on Dantooine. Did you see it? Of course. You must have. The Force is strong with us both. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. Okay, so that wasn't the star map then. Looked like it was in some kind the of pit. The star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. Okay. Let's do our initial, like... Oh, Big Z. Let's check our supplies in the car hold. Something's not right. Not right? What do you mean? Instead of the emergency stash food, Mr. I asked everyone if nobody knows anything about it. Check out the food stores next time you're in the cargo hold. Okay, we kind of saw that. It's like this way. We might as well take a look. That's the bunks. Candorous, there's the engine. Med bay, where, where is that? Is that this way? This is where mission is. It's where Candorous is. Where's Where's the food stores in this place? It's the gunner's emplacement. It's not off of there. Is it in here? It's in here. Food storage seems to have been disturbed, so no one in the party would have done this. There must be some other explanation. Examine the supplies more closely. There are no half eaten or torn patches indicating okay, that the theft was from pests or vermin. It more looks like some unknown person has been conducting clandestine raids on your stores. Or if they visit a vegetable detached by Yuri Pages so far, maybe a thorough search of the ship will reveal a stowaway. Uh, 
this. No problem. Oh, you think you're the soft power post of spider when you stop to listen, they disappear. Okay, so I am actually just supposed to explore the ship. You hear the soft power post of when you stop to listen, they disappear. Okay, I'm chasing it around the ship. Andrus. Yeah, what do you want? Did you see anything? Your tro Here the echo of us come from the direction of the cargo hold. This is the cargo hold, right? Or no, the cargo holds where the supplies would be. You're the first to sell it there. It's a child. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Hello, girl. Where did you come from? Salima wanga kun bikin. Calm down. Mucha shaka panga. I still don't understand you. What the heck? <laughs> Got a young girl. The language speaks while well, sounding like Mandalorian, translated to pure gibberish. I mean, no, the language certainly doesn't know how to use it. And yet it seems to be the only way she knows. My boss will try talking to her, but dumping her on the planet is also a possibility. Mucha shaka panga. Can you tell me your name? Gaston. Do you know a Twi'lek by the name of Lara Casulas? Your name is Sasha. How did you get on the ship? Many of the words you're speaking are Mandalorian. So you do know of them. Selima Wanga Kun Kipuna, bona na kichu. So you're a human. Tonki ba no. Esawan? Abuk shami no nok. Tonki ba non tontek. You don't see. Tonki ba non tontek. Tonki ba non tontek. Kipuna, bona na kichu. The panel, all this, it's your home. Kipuna, bona na kichu. Tonki ba non ton. Tong abuk. Tong abuk shami no nok. So you've been hiding in here. Tonki ba non tontek. Selima wanga kun bikin. It's your home? Starship. Hide in the Starship, it's your home. Something about me, yes. Mucha shaka panga. Tong abuk shami no no. Something you like. Mucha shaka panga. You like me. Selima wanga kun bikin. Said when I first found you. Bona na kichu. Hit. Kipuna. Bona na kichu. Hurt, not hurt. Tong ki ba non tontek. No, I won't hurt you. Tong ki ba non tontek. What kind of word is that? Tong abuk shami no nok. A part of the ship. Selima wanga kun bikin. Is that all one phrase? Bona na kichu. The floor? Kipuna. Bona na kichu. 
Us speaking now means now, not now Kipuna. before. Bona na kichu. You want some food now? Tonki You're hungry. Ba non tontek. Selima wanga kun bi king. I'll have Tonki to think about ba. that. Mucha shaka pa. So Tonki talk. ba non tontek. Tell me Tonki about. ba non tontek. Tell me about you. Mucha shaka pa ka. Someone there who will take you home. Why are you hiding on my Selima ship? Wanga you came to the ship before you were very Kipuna. scared. Why? Kichu. You left the Mandalorians and Tonki hid here on the ship. Non -tontek. Wait a minute, there was a child who was stolen. Tong abuk shami no nok. That Minog is not your home. Not your first home, anyway. Tong abuk shami no nok. Tell me about your home before. Tong ki ba non tontek. Dantooine. Tong abuk shami no nok. Uh, yes, you can go home. What a wild conversation that was. We're going to cap this one here. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>